I'll never forget the morning of 9-11. We were in the midst of an argument uh, within the Defense Appropriations uh, Committee. Uh, we meet on the ground floor of the Capitol building, and uh, uh, the argument was whether we should appropriate some of the $10 billion that we were putting into missile defense into counterterrorism. Richard Clark, uh, President Bush's counterterrorism expert, uh, had told us that the real threat was asymmetrical. It was not from a nation state as much as it was from a terrorist act, and that we needed to start preparing ourselves for the uh, certainty, uh, I think is the word he used, of a terrorist attack on our shores. Uh, and so some of us were arguing we should take some of the missile defense money, put it into counterterrorism, uh, about a tenth of it. In the midst of that argument, we heard uh, a, a, um, uh, a lot of commotion outside the hearing room. We're on the main corridor of the Capitol on the ground floor. And um, it seemed like there was a crowd surge going by uh, outside the door. Uh, so we asked staff to find out what's going on, and uh, uh, Norm Dix uh, turned on the television, and we saw these pictures of planes having gone into the trade centers. Now, we, uh, we didn't know what to think. Uh, our immediate assumption was that it was uh, an accident, uh, but it was two, and so uh, it, it was uh, uh, inexplicable. Uh, the, um, but then the doors were opened. We saw crowds surging past our hearing room uh, to get out of the Capitol, and they were yelling, uh, we've got to evacuate the Capitol. Well, my first concern was that uh, it was my guest who gave the invocation that morning, uh, Father Jerry Creedon from St. Charles uh, Catholic Church in Arlington, Virginia. And so I had to make my way against the crowd, through the crowd going the other direction, up to the second floor to find Father Creedon. Well, I found him. He said that uh, he was told, Father, you ought to make this profound, but it's got to be very quick. We've got to get out of here. And so, in fact, uh, Father Creedon's invocation is the only thing recorded on the congressional record that day. Um, I came down with him, and we met up with Jack Murtha, who was kind of an institution uh, in the Congress and uh, uh, chair of defense appropriations. We went outside, and uh, uh, I was going to go with the rest of the folks, but Jack held behind. Uh, he said, let's, uh, let's let the crowd clear. We could see that there was a great deal of smoke coming from the direction of the Pentagon. We were told that there was another plane headed to the direction of the Capitol. It turned out that plane was simply off course, but there was a plane, and ironically, it was over Jack's uh, congressional district in Pennsylvania. Uh, but uh, he explained to me that uh, how much fate plays in our lives. He, uh, while all this commotion was going on, he told me a little story about when he was in Vietnam in a bunker and um, they were taking fire and uh, a, uh, a young private jumped in the, to the foxhole with him. Well, there wasn't enough room for both and so they were sticking out, which meant that there would surely be a, a grenade landed on and kill both of them. So he was shaking, uh, the, the private was, so Jack got out of the foxhole, ran into, against the oncoming um, uh, gunfire, and into another foxhole, even closer to where the, the source of the fire was, but uh, he needed to do it. And he said, but you know, as fate would have it, within minutes, the foxhole where I was was blown up. Uh, and he says, that's, uh, you know, that taught me that if you're going to go, you're going to go. And if it's not your time, no matter what happens, uh, you're probably safe. So he said, don't, don't worry about this. We went over to a building uh, near the Monocle restaurant. Uh, it was an old Capitol Police building. And uh, a, a number of the decision makers were there, leaders of the, of the Senate particularly. Uh, we asked Father Creedon to give us a, a prayer. The real issue that they were discussing was whether we should shoot down uh, the commercial plane that they thought was coming at the Capitol. It had over 200 passengers. And then within minutes, we heard that uh, that was not, that 
plane that we had in our sights wasn't headed toward the Capitol, but there was another plane that they thought would. And then we heard that it had been grounded, and Jack found out, and Mr. Murtha found out, uh, was grounded in his uh, congressional district. We all know the the, uh, the story of, uh, of Flight 103, but uh, and he uh, put a memorial where it went down, and the heroism of the passengers that prevented it from coming to the Capitol, which is probably where it was headed. Uh, but it was all kind of a blur, except that now when I think back, it's a very vivid memory. It's, it was a morning that was unforgettable and probably you know, will forever uh, be part of uh, American history, albeit a very sad chapter.